What's up, guys? Welcome back to Deck Tech for Decks. I'm your host, Caleb. Special shout out to my high contributing patrons, Newsom, you rock. Now, let's get into today's video with the Mothman. And guys, he's absolutely insane. This guy buffs your board state up very fast, and he's one of those commanders that kind of makes a whole subtype that wasn't really viable, viable again. And with that, I'm talking about the mill cards that mill one to two cards at a time. Usually, those aren't very powerful in commander because we want mass mill effects so we can mill the whole table out in one go using stuff like traumatize but this is not that deck this deck likes very small incremental mill and it generates a ton of value and makes our board state super massive the thing about this commander also is he kind of just goes pseudo infinite with a lot of different cards let me explain let's say we have something like altar of the brood on the battlefield and then we have this balith over here now whenever we go ahead and put a counter on the balith a permanent enters the battlefield our opponents mill cards and then we get to put another counter on the ballot now this is not infinite but it can be enough if that makes sense right as long as they keep milling non-lands we're going to keep putting counters on that ballot and we're going to keep generating a massive board state this can result in you untapping with a board state big enough to kill all of your opponents like i said this guy's kind of busted another one of the best cards in the deck is fathom mage we do run a lot of mill cards that say hey whenever you draw a card your opponent mills two cards so if we have fathom mage on the battlefield with our commander they're going to mill two cards and as long as they mill the non-land card we can put another counter on fathom mage this is going to make it to where we can draw all the cards we need to win the game while getting a super massive fathom mage again not infinite but you know enough so if that sounds like a deck tech you want to get into let's get into it and hey guys don't forget if you're loving these deck techs don't forget to subscribe it really helps me out without further ado let's get into it let's kick it off by talking about the creatures we want to put a ton of counters on herd balith is amazing on top of just going near infinite with altar of the brood and our commander it just makes a massive board state and is really going to contribute to us ending the game fathom mage danny pink and myra lurk queen are all cards that can net us card advantage whenever we put a counter on them notably danny pink does this to our entire board and fathom mage doesn't have a once per turn clause on her so as long as we have one of those mill enchantments yeah that is just going to almost draw us our entire library and mill out our opponents in the process. Marcus is just another way to get card advantage whenever our creatures deal combat damage, and then additionally, he will just also put counters on the creatures that don't already have counters on him, so he's solid for that as well. Incubation Druid is really good, all we have to do is put one counter on this girl, and then we're tapping for three mana, that's incredibly powerful. Kami of Whispered Hopes, not only does it put additional counters on our creatures, but it also does get massive and tap for a ton of mana. Cool Dyed Selkie is just going to get bigger and start drawing us more and more cards. Glenalindra Archmage is really good here because we can take that negative counter off of her with our commander and get near infinite counter spells. It's going to be pretty oppressive. Kodama of the West Tree ramps us whenever a modified creature deals combat damage. Purr and Toothy are also going to be amazing in this deck. Purr is just going to double up on all of our counters because remember, all the counters in this deck are going to be one-offs. So whenever we have something that just puts an additional counter on it, it's basically the same as a branching evolution effect that just does double up all the 1-1 counters. And then we have Toothy. We're just going to put a ton of counters on this guy and blink him. We do have a little bit of a blink sub-theme because our commander does trigger on ETB. The Ozolith, Hardened Scales, and Winding Constrictor, again, these are all just going to double up on our counters and then additionally winding constrictor will get us an additional rad counter which if we can get more cards in our graveyard yeah we're gonna welcome that ripples an absolutely insane way to dodge board wipes it's even better than heroic intervention in a lot of scenarios because phasing out does just dodge all exile effects so farewell's not gonna do much against us as long as this is in our hand agent frank horgan now this guy's just amazing because he's massive he enters the battlefield he's gonna start proliferating those rad counters and all of our 1-1 one -one counters. And then again, did I say he's massive? Yeah, this guy's going to hit like a truck. The Great Hinge is just a solid way to draw cards whenever we're blinking our commander in and out. And then again, it will put additional counters on our creatures. Not to mention, it does mitigate some of the damage we are taking from the rad counters due to that life gain and its ramp. It does everything. Now, let's move on to how we're going to trigger our commander with mill. Remember, this commander does care about incremental mill instead of mass mill. So that's really attractive. Sphinx's tutelage, Psychic Corruption, 
Corrosion and Teferi's Tutelage are absolutely insane in this deck, milling our opponents a ton and buffing our board state up a ton. Notably, these three with Fathom Mage will just draw our library and mill out our opponents, so that's kind of insane to think about. Mesmeric Orb and Altar of the Brood are amazing one-off effects. Again, these will make our creatures massive very fast. Altar of the Brood has that insane synergy with the Balith, so don't forget that. That's going to in the game nine times out of ten. Mind Crank is another one we're running that is incremental. Now anytime they take damage, they are just gonna mill some cards and we're gonna put some counters on our creatures. Notably, Mind Crank does have a near infinite combo as well. Sir Conrad, as long as we're milling cards and those cards are creatures, our opponents are going to keep taking damage and mill more cards. And as long as those cards are creatures, again our opponents are going to keep taking damage. Now, this isn't infinite, but it's near infinite and might cause you to win a couple games on the spot. Dreamboard Muse, Shadowkin, and Court of Cunning are all cards that are going to mill at the beginning of our upkeep. Now, not exactly what the doctor ordered for our commander, but it is going to be very consistent mill, and all of these cards do give us some benefit, especially when we have a solid amount of ways to reanimate cards from our graveyard as well as our opponent's graveyards. Hedron Crab and Ruin Crab, again, just solid ways to mill our opponents. These are kind of incremental and do happen every time we play a land, so they are ve definitely very welcomed. Realm Breaker is pretty solid here. It's going to get us some ramp. It's going to be that incremental mill. It's everything you could ask for. Invasion of Amonkhet. Again, this is mass mill, so it's not the best, but it is solid, especially because we're kind of playing this card for its backside, being able to flip it and then it become a copy of any creature card in a graveyard. That's going to be pretty busted for our deck. Breach the Multiverse. Again, this is probably one we're just playing for that massive reanimation ability and then additionally it is mill so we take it where we can get it bramble familiar we have 40 creatures in the deck so we're going to get some spicy stuff off of that adventure and then early game it's just going to be a mana dork it's super flexible glowing one is going to give us some more life gain this can kind of just make our life total untouchable in some scenarios and at worst it is just going to keep us in the game longer shieldred is one of the game enders in this deck this is kind of one of the payoffs for milling our opponent to oblivion all game we're just gonna flip her and then we can proliferate this in some scenarios to get an instant put all creature cards from each graveyard onto the battlefield under your control pretty busted screeching scorch beast this is going to be a solid payoff for our mass mill effects. It is only once per turn, but once per turn when we're milling someone a ton can equal an instant board state, so definitely keep your eye out for that. Sir Conrad, again, one of our best mill effects payoffs. On top of the rad counters, once you add Sir Conrad into the mix, people are really going to start taking a lot of life from all of our incremental mill, and then he does go near infinite with Mind Crank, which is absolutely busted. Let's move on to the core of the deck. We have Sword of Hearth and Home. Not only is this solid ramp, but it can keep blinking our Mothman, making sure everybody keeps a ton of rad counters on them. Blade of Selves is also solid here. We attack with our Mothman. Not only do they get a rad counter from the attack, but two additional Mothmen will enter the battlefield, instantly die to the legend roll, but the ETB will still happen, giving everybody three rad counters a turn. Pretty solid. Swift of Boots to protect our commander. This is a very commander-oriented deck, so we definitely want to protect him. Mudratha to cast all of the things from our graveyard. The Master Transcendent. It's going to reanimate some pretty broken cards. Not only are we playing some broken creatures, but I'm sure our opponents are too, so he's definitely going to be welcome in this deck. Marin of Clan Toth. Again, this is going to be a super solid way to get those creatures that we're milling back to our hand or even uh, the battlefield. The Scarab God, another way to reanimate either our opponents or our creature cards whenever we mill them. Sepulchral Primordial, more reanimation, stealing our opponent's creatures. Dothy Voidwalker, we don't want to help out anybody's graveyard strategy, so Dothy's going to be a solid way to take care of that. And then additionally, it's just going to net us some really good value. Uro Titan is another way we can utilize all of the cards in our graveyard. He's going to be very beneficial, giving us card advantage and ramp at the same time with a little bit of life gain, which is exactly what the doctor ordered for this deck. Savala so Heart of the Wilds is just going to tap for an absolute ton of mana. Grim Hireling is usually kind of an iffy thing to attack with because people will just block her and kill her. But in this deck, we can make Grim Hireling massive. And then she's just going to give us a ton of treasure tokens up to six per turn. And then we do have the option to use those treasure tokens to kill creatures. 
Guardian projects for the card advantage. I like this because, again, it triggers on ETB. So whenever we're blinking our commander, we will get the card advantage off of that. Or in Frostfang for some more card advantage. Windfall is going to give us card advantage and additionally fill up those graveyards even more. Toxroll the Corrosive will just flat in games, and that's no exception in this deck. If we get this thing to land, we are just going to win the game. If you guys made it this far, don't forget to subscribe again. That really helps me out. Liking the video also increases the reach. Now, let's get into those vegetables, the part everybody loves. To make it up to you, I'll give you an infinite combo at the end of this video. We have Nature's Lore, Farseek, Three Visits, Secure, Tri Builder, and Soul Ring for some additional ramp, Siren Storm Tamer to protect our commander even more, Haywire. Fire Might, Reclamation Sage, Kanker Bloom, just for some solid removal. Also, Kanker Bloom does proliferate, so that's notable. Toxic Deluge as a solid board wipe. Bane of Progress, again, a solid board wipe that does just get massive. And then we are going to go on to that infinite combo I promised you. The Mothman is a potential food chain commander. What that means is he has such a broken ETB ability that we can put food chain in the deck, maybe an Eternal Scourge or a Mist Hollow Griffin, and then we can cast our commander an infinite amount of times once we've generated infinite mana with the Mist Hollow Griffin. This will give everybody infinite rad counters, causing them to mill their entire library and lose the game at their first main phase. With that being said guys, it brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching this long. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And one last thing, let me thank my patrons. You guys are amazing. Newsome, Excessum, Chicken Salad, Creator, you guys are amazing. You definitely keep the channel going, so I'm very appreciative of that. With that being said guys, I hope this helped you in your deck building endeavors and I will see you in the next one.